building muscle requires consistency and patience. But what if you have been putting in the work for a long time and are noticing little progress? This is a situation in which I found myself after my first 18 months of training. While consistency is important, we want to be consistent with an approach that actually is effective and takes you closer towards your goals. So in today's video, I will discuss the top 5 muscle growth mistakes I made at the start of my journey so you can learn from my mistakes and I can also give you some practical tips on how you can do better. These will be mostly training mistakes I'd like you to avoid. But the first mistake is actually nutrition related and that is being in a calorie deficit for too long. I mentioned this once before in one of my previous videos, but a calorie deficit is not a destination. A calorie deficit is a temporary tool we use to get more fat loss progress. But eventually, there should be enough fat loss to transition out of a calorie deficit and start eating at a higher calorie intake to properly fuel your body. Because by definition, a calorie deficit is restrictive. You're feeding your body less calories than it needs to sustain itself so that your body burns fat. For muscle growth, this is counterproductive because now your body also has less energy to utilize towards training and building new muscle, as supported by research showing that a calorie deficit results in lower muscle protein synthesis rates. Now, this is not to say you can't build muscle in a calorie deficit because there is research showing you can, but muscle growth does slow down if you are consistently in a deficit. This is why I like to use the 1 to 2 ratio with most of my online coaching clients that are looking to build muscle. For every month that you spend in a calorie deficit, you spend 2 months in a lean bulk or maintenance phase. Because when you eat at maintenance or even better yet, slightly above your maintenance calories, this is when you can supply the body with more carbohydrates to train more intensely and consume more calories in general to support the anabolic processes related to muscle growth. There are multiple ways to organize this 1 to 2 ratio in your fitness plan. You can alternate between 1 month of fat loss and 2 months of lean bulking or go for longer fat loss periods and lean bulk phases. The moral of the story here is that your body can benefit from not being in a calorie deficit for fat loss constantly but also having phases in which you consume more. One of the reasons I wasn't noticing much progress back in the day is because I was always looking to lean down further, but your muscles can develop more effectively when you are not restricting calories. Next up, we have a training mistake that people commonly make and that is constantly changing the exercises you do in your lifting workouts. When it comes to exercise selection, it's sometimes believed you should train for muscle confusion and frequently change your exercises. But if muscle growth or strength gain is the goal, then having consistency in your compound lifts is beneficial. There is interesting research showing that the initial progress you make on a compound movement is more because of neuromuscular adaptations and skill learning rather than actual muscle growth. An exercise only becomes effective for muscle growth once you have mastered the movement. Just think about the first time you did a barbell bench press. It probably was quite unstable because the movement was new to you. Once you felt more comfortable in the exercise, that's when you were able to effectively engage your chest and progressively overload the movement. When you change up your exercises too frequently, you prevent becoming a master in your compound movements because once you gain some efficiency in that exercise, it's already swapped out for another movement. As a general guideline, keep your foundational compound exercises in your routine consistent for at least 8-10 to 10 weeks before changing them up. An exception here is when an exercise feels uncomfortable. Now, if you like to have more variation in your training program, then your isolation exercises can be varied more frequently. Isolation exercises like side raises and bicep curls are more simple and require less skill learning. Switching up these exercises every 4 weeks or so is no problem. The third mistake is related to progressive overload and there are actually two types of mistakes I'd like to cover here. One mistake is not caring about progressive overload and just wanting to feel a pump while you train, while another common mistake is caring about progressive overload too much and being willing to give up proper lifting form to lift more weight. Both should be avoided. The principle of progressive overload states that if you impose greater demands on your muscles over time, your muscles develop by growing bigger and stronger. So the goal shouldn't necessarily be to feel a pump or sweat a lot during your workouts, it should be to challenge your muscles to lift more weight or do more repetitions over time. But it's worth emphasizing that progressive overload is about being able to perform better in your main movements while keeping your lifting technique the same. Everyone can progress in weight if they start using a lot more momentum in training, but it doesn't mean your muscles are challenged more. So aim to progressively overload your main lifts without changing your underlying exercise technique. The fourth mistake is also a common one and that is not taking your recovery seriously. Your recovery from training is at least as important as your training itself. Because if poor fatigue management is in place, you won't be able to perform at your best in the gym and muscle growth will be limited as a result of this. For some reason, when I started my fitness journey, I always thought that I should train more. My thought process was that I haven't reached my goals yet, so it's not time to rest, but it's time to put in more work. Well, this eventually can work counterproductive. Because if you overdo your training, eventually you run into a recovery hole and your body will force you to take a step back by making you feel more fatigued. 
If you're new to lifting weights, you don't need a ton of training sessions to make initial progress. For most people, having, say, three workouts per week is a great starting point towards consistent training. Over time, this can gradually increase to four or five workouts per week. Also, when you have a rest day, take your rest. You don't have to do intense cardio or any other intense activity to burn more calories. Going for a walk or something like that is totally fine, but my point is that your body needs recovery for good performance and muscle growth, so let's prioritize recovery. Lastly, the fifth mistake is about not tracking your progress, and I mentioned this in one of my previous videos as well. If you do not track your progress, it will be tough to manage your progress. Especially with a process that is so slow and subtle like muscle growth. Muscle growth doesn't occur quickly, so just by checking yourself in the mirror, you won't be able to get a good gauge of whether you are actually taking steps forward in your muscle building phase. We need specific progress measures to help us decide whether things are heading in the right direction and whether any changes to the approach are necessary. And I like to use three main measures, your body weight, waist measurement and training performance. In the case of building muscle, your most important progress measure is your training performance. If you are able to consistently perform better over time, your muscles will be forced to adapt by growing bigger and stronger. But because muscle tissue carries weight as well, it makes sense to see your body weight going up steadily over time as you effectively gain muscle. To make sure this weight is mostly muscle and not fat, we also take a waist measurement because your waist measure is a good indicator of how your body fat percentage is developing. These three measures help you track muscle growth development and allow you to make changes to your approach whenever needed to boost your progress. And that was all for today's video. I hope you have been able to take some learning lessons from my mistakes so that you can do better. If you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.